I'm glad you talked about the uh, breaking it up over a longer uh, period of time. Like uh, for our courses, we do that by uh, identifying the things that are most important by the end of the class, which is weapons handling and making sure that they can do their right. draws and uh, moving around people properly uh, without endangering anyone. And so the way that we hide it technically in uh, the classes is after we've developed a skill set that we're looking for, so say like a two handed draw. Um, we run our classes or information that we're giving to them. They run that drill and then we immediately make them do two hand draw, uh, 25 meter bulls, you know, yeah. uh, where they practice and they do like 10 of those, they 10 shots. Uh, and then what happens is we move into the next lesson then we make them do 25 meter bull, you know, yeah. like, and, and what happens is people, they don't, they're not picking up the fact that we're doing that same thing. Um, and by, by the end of the class, by the end of the four or five days, none of those weapons handling skills um, are under that certain rep range. Like, but if right. we were to sit there and go, hey, you, by the end of the class, you did 250 reps, but the next class, if we tried to like knock that all out in one session, there would not be the same type of return uh, as the way that we Absolutely. did it by hiding it in between um, the, the drills. Um, yeah, I think that's a, you know, and I think that's just part of being a, uh, an experienced trainer is, you know, you have to know your student, understand that everybody's different. You have to meet everybody where they're at. But, you know, one of the things that, that I've always done in training is kind of try to prioritize the things that are important and then proportion my training to that. Because I really don't care about the things that are easy to grade and are easily quantifiable. I really care about the things that are gonna give people the most benefit when they're out on the street to save their own lives or if they're in combat or if they're a police officer or whatever. So it's a, it, it's a matter of prioritizing. These are the things I think are most important. I prioritize my training to that. And then those skills we're talking about, breaking those up so that at the end of the training, I go, at a minimum, when somebody leaves this training, I want them to have a mastery of this skill. So that's the one I'm gonna make sure that they get the most reps on. My daughter went to the Junior Olympics as a, as a gymnast and you know she was able to do that in three years, but um, she trained super, super hard. But one of the things I talked to her a lot about was visualizing and getting the mental reps in because your body doesn't know the difference. And so I think just because you're not actually doing something, your brain doesn't know the difference. You can get a physiological response from your body just by thinking through it, you know? So, and there's tons and tons of research on this. Don't take my word on this, but you know, we know this. So anyways, I think visualizing yourself and when you visualize yourself, how it's gonna feel, you know, how your body moves when this happens, what you're seeing, your focus, all of this type of thing, the emotion attached to it, all of that, I really think helps you learn skills quicker. So to really be a disciple of something or to be a master of something, you have to totally devote yourself to it. And that, that's not just in your mat time or on your range time or in your training time or whatever, it's like, it's who you are, it, it's in your brain. And that gets to our mindset of your brain is always learning. It's always calculating and not just learning from your experiences, but learning from others' experiences. Yeah. So I think that's just a you know, smart way to approach any type of training that we do. Mm -hmm.